Hello everyone and welcome to this wonderful Monday evening live stream. We're gonna once again have a look at 11 Second Club competition entries. The 11 Second Club is of course a wonderful animation competition where anyone can enter. It doesn't matter if you are uh, already a professional animator, just learning animation. We are going to watch animations of all skill level and see what we can learn from them. Um, we're going to see what the good animations do to make them great. We're going to see uh, some things that could be improved to make animations even better. This is perfect for beginners to learn uh, how the 12 principles look in action, how good acting and storytelling and cinematography can look in action. And uh, of course, we can also learn a lot from other people's mistakes and, and try to avoid them in our own animation. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to watch the 11 Second Club competition entries uh, from March. We are in April now. So uh, yeah, we're going to have a look at the ones from the previous month. And uh, yeah, as always, if you participated in the 11 Second Club uh, in any month, not just the last one, uh, please let me know what place you made in which month, and we will also have a look at that animation. Um, so yeah, if you participate in the 11 Second Club uh, and I do one of these streams, I can check your animation out as well and give you my feedback to it. Um, yeah, for people who don't know how the 11 Second Club w works, they post an audio clip every single month that you can animate to whatever you want. You can redefine the situation, think about some crazy unusual character to speak those dialogues, uh, and it's always a lot of fun. Yeah, and with that being said, we can dive right in. Let's make this a little smaller uh so we can actually see the first animation um and this of course if we, we're starting with the winner uh, i'm not going to spend that much time on the winning entry because uh, there will be uh there will be a longer analysis that the winner gets uh, from animation mentor um so if you're interested in what the pro said animation mentor found in this animation uh i highly encourage you to check that out as well um let's actually stream the tab because then you don't have that annoying uh bar up here so let's do the screen share again screen and we're just going to take that tab uh, yeah, let me know if everything with the audio is working fine. Um, Got to get rid of the background audio so we can fully focus on the animation and the uh, audio that was put there from the 11 Second Club. Uh, there we go. Let's have a look at the first place of the March competition and see what they animated. How did you get in here? The window, obviously. Do you attack everyone who comes in here? Seems like a weird thing to do, but live and let live. You can't just break into my apartment. Well, clearly I can. I mean, I just I'll did. call the police. <laughs> I love that idea. Uh, as you can see, uh, this person, this animator, JM Animator, added a whole big intro to frame this piece of dialogue uh, from the March competition. And it's always a good sign if you like if you have some physical motion in there and you feel like you can almost hear it. Like I, I kind of want to put in. Uh, sound effects. Like, I almost hear the sound effects uh, How did you get in? in the back of my head, which I think is really, really cool if you get animation to to do that. And I think one of the, the, the things that is mainly responsible is the awesome uh, 
the, the awesome effects in some of those moments, like to have the the resistance here, I think that works very well. Uh, you can see there's a little bit of shake. Uh, it's also called a stagger, and uh, staggers are pretty cool. Cool, I think. I'm not that familiar with doing staggers in 3D animation. I would assume that there is probably a modifier for that to have the um, the character jiggle back and forth between a keyframe. Uh, the way how you do this in 2D animation is you would basically um, you would have your animation, you would have your motion of uh, the person coming out of the screen, like you know, putting the arms on in, in both positions. Um, like, you know, something like this. And you would just animate it forward. Oh, you can't, you can't see that. Uh, boop, 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 boop. Uh, so I guess I do share my screen so I can switch windows. Uh, share screen. Wait, can I do two screen shares? Hmm. Now that would probably confuse me and uh, thinking about always switching back and forth in my streaming software. I think I should just share my screen. Um, so the way how you would do this in uh, 2D animation is you would do the entire animation of the character pushing himself out of the, out of the window. And uh, then you would have like, you know, maybe you do it in a linear way, maybe, well, you would probably, you want more resistance the uh, closer you get to the end. Uh, so you might might probably do one like this, uh, and then you number them. And let's say we animate them on twos, meaning that we hold a drawing for each, uh, did we he hold each drawing for two frames? So we would have three, five, seven, nine, 11, uh, let's see, this is 11, this is 13, this is 15. And then to get a stagger, you could then, you know, if you play this, you just get an ease. You get the character ease into that position. But if you play the uh, those drawings in a back and forth order, like you could go one, three, one, five, three, seven, five, nine, seven, uh, 11, nine, 11. You can just repeat a couple of them. Uh, seven, 13, uh, nine, 15, something like this, you would get like the stagger effect of the character jittering back and forth between the frames as if there is some kind of resistance. Um, so that that's how you would do this in 2D animation. And I, I, you could do something similar in 3D animation, but there's probably a smarter way to do it in 3D. Uh, and I think a very important thing that makes this effect work is that the resistance is broken at some point. Like you have this motion getting more staggery and slower and slower, but then there's this point where all of a sudden you have this, this huge, um, whoop, um, this huge release where you have like a really large spacing. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's really cool. And then you have like this cartoony delayed fall, um, which I like because it's not completely delayed. Like you have his his legs curl up. Like there is a little bit of what would happen when he would fall, but very slowly. Like the body is doing the fall like in slow motion, barely making round. And you have this whole arm uh, panic motion. And that I think works really well uh, with, again, a similar effect of the spacing all of a sudden becoming super large. You have him go from here to there. Uh, pay attention to the head. The head is a little bit delayed. You see the neck gets already longer and the head is still up there. And then you have this, this big spacing. And this makes a 
big impact. And I feel like this is the reason why you can, without hearing sound effects, uh, you almost feel like you can hear sound effects because this animation is so yeah, so pleasing with the spacings that it uses. And some things I want to point out in this one that I really, really like um, are how there are always like little little side details. Like I like, first of all, that hey wave uh, is just uh, kind of funny to begin with. Uh, but then having the, the uh, fingers curl a little bit, like that's really, really nice. the accent on get in here and then you have like this wonderful like overshoot so let's see how that this is an interesting kind of overshoot because you kind of have i feel like the cliche way of how to do this point overshoot um would be to after this position, after this overshoot, um, I feel like what I would maybe end up doing, um, what I would end up doing is I would probably more relax it in the elbow and have the arm, like the finger, like everything will go a little bit back. Uh, so you have a clear, like, you know, this is the overshoot position. This is the overshoot taken back. And I would probably drop the elbow, uh, also to, to loosen up the shape because, you know, uh, a straight point like that, there's a lot of energy in a clear, strong point like that. So I might want to relax the, uh, the energy out of this arm a little bit. But the animator here, interestingly, made uh, another choice, namely to um, keep the arm straight and just pull it down after, like when it relaxes. Um, and I don't know. It gives it almost like a little bit of a puppet marionette feel, which I get a little bit in general from this piece. Like there's always a lot of side motion like you 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 have the characters kind of like twist and turn a little bit um i'm gonna switch off the sound maybe like you have always a certain bounciness like look at his hip um see that he bounces like up and down a little bit that could be just a normal keep alive, but I almost get like a little bit of marionette vibes from it, which might also be the look, you know, with the the arm pieces stuck in a in a in a circle. Uh, that might also give me the impression of like puppets, um, like you know, kind of what they do in Toy Story a little bit. They have like these these kind of floppy motions with a little bit of a twist. Uh, which I think is is really fun. Um, so, but I'm not a hundred percent sure if this is intentional. Um, yeah, but the point does have a nice drive. <laughs> I I I wonder if. Like there's a, a whole lot going on. There are big poses, big floppy overshooty motions. I wonder if, you know, this is nitpicking on, on a very high level. This is a very high quality level. I wonder if it's sometimes, um, you know, obviously the timing was kind of uh, preset through the audio that this had to be animated through. But I almost wonder if sometimes you could be given just a little bit, a tiny 
bit longer holds, like two frames more, four frames more here and there. Like after they get in there, I, I like I barely have a chance to see this guy's facial expression. Because you know, everything is in service of this point and this snap. And uh, I mean, I guess the facial expression is not very uh it's kind of interesting. Like it's it's a very interesting choice to keep the uh eyebrows straight like that. Um that's interesting because I feel like you know you could have done something crazy, uh, something with the eyebrows to give it a little bit of more of a focus point, because uh, you know the more angles and details you have in the face, the more likely people are gonna look at the eyebrows. Um, you know, if we're already doing this, we might want to push the asymmetry for this a little bit. Um, I don't know, but maybe this is also a conscious choice. I'm also a big fan of like, you know, we, we just have like, uh, I, I, I like that this mouth shape is cricket. Like that's good. Um, that gives you like, a, uh, that gives you a nice uh, angle. But I wonder if a more complex mouth shape, uh, like, I don't know. This is not right for every moment. Um, but, you know, to have it like a little bit of an asymmetric bean uh, could make this, you know, could introduce some more crazy detail here. Um, Isai asks, do you know any method how to time an action? I actually made a YouTube video about timing. Let me, let me pull that up for you. Um, boop, boop, boop. Where is it? Uh, Animator Island timing. Uh, that might be worth checking out if you don't really have uh, an idea where to start, you know, where even to begin finding a, a rules for your timing uh let's oh this is a, a big long playlist link don't want to do that let's just check if that works yeah 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 that's the one um so yeah, for anyone uh, who wants to learn about timing, um, you might want to check this out. Uh, yeah. So, but I'm already spending way too much time with the first place. As I said, there's going to be an official critique from Animation Mentor. So check that out if you want to learn more about the nitpicky details that even a, a really good animation like this could um, could do better. Uh, but yeah, it's a well-deserved and fun first place. I love the framing. Um, I always like if there's like a hint of a story in there uh, with the, the character come to life. That's very fun. Well-deserved well first place, JM Animator. Awesome work. Let's have a look at the next one. This is the second place by Ari Hendrawan. <laughs> I also like this one a lot. Uh, notice how different the energy is. Like this person, uh, took this character and had a, a lot more, had smaller motions, longer holds, and it still works. I like how the same audio clip can be pushed to two extremes. You can be extremely uh, cartoony with it, but then you can also, um, you know, bring bring a little bit more calmness to it if you want to. You can sort of like. Um, 
push or dampen the energy that a voice clip has, and it it, it works. <laughs> um, I I I almost like like I'm a fan of like subtleties, um, and. One thing that I know is like, first of all, you know, there's some things that are not subtle, like that hand smash on the table, really nice, huge spacing, huge spacing before slamming onto the table. And then there's a little bit of a bounce back on the table, really nice. This is really well done. I find it interesting how there's not a big accent on obviously which you know is a big part of the voice performance but it's kind of interesting an interesting choice how it wasn't played out that big there's just a little head nod and of course the the voice uh the mouth shape lee and you have that this like little nod I also somehow really like the that live and let live is tucked into this post chain a change. When where is it really over? The V of live and let live, the last live is during during that turn. Uh, kind of demonstrative, like to turn around while you're talking to somebody, that's usually not something you do. And I think it's a very good conscious acting choice. Um, we have another point. Let's see how that point was done. We have a little bit of more of what my first idea was. We have an overshoot and then we relax the elbow and that relax already leads to the next pose. Also interesting, the um, folded legs. Legs are super interesting. I feel like so underrated in uh, animation, what you can do with the legs. Um, there is something of uh, stability of stance. We have this character like kind of superior, relaxed, um, and, and has like this very symmetric pose has the legs folded, which is kind of, you know, getting comfortable. Um, and for the more confrontational part, for the like, okay, I need to, I need to give my argument. He's, I guess his legs are still crossed, but he takes it down. Um, and then when he's done making his point, he, oh, he uncrosses it. Okay. It's interesting. It's interesting. So he kind of starts more comfortable and ends in a more alert thing. I like that he also does something with the uncrossed legs. After having the legs uncrossed, he can do this with the chair. See, there's this little adjustment in his uh, seating position. And that is easier to do when you have uncrossed your legs. That is such a nice detail. I really like that. Uh, if you do animations like this to dialogue, really search for these little gestures that uh, an actor would give you for free. You know, an actor would sometimes like, you know, adjust the chair and stuff. This is uh, something that you need to think about when you're animating the, the scene. The adjustment of the chair doesn't come out of nowhere. You need to consciously decide to do that. Yeah, really solid one. Also love the symmetric. Like I perfectly placed myself here. That's really nice.
my only critique would be you have a character that is giving a very subtle performance and it's a joy to watch this subtle performance uh and then you have this this character doing this big gestures in the background he is distracting if you just watch this once people will probably look more at him because more stuff is happening there but i feel like the real juice like you know and the status negotiation the the interesting part of the status negotiation is here it's a character who broke into a house and doesn't behave at all like a burglar or you know like anyone who is uh feeling guilty or you know that that he is what makes this situation so unusual and we're kind of dragging the attention away to the character in the background by like first of all i like this as an opener and i think this also works because he's not doing anything he does the big thing and he still more or less uh has the same pose just looks over which is nice because it bridges a little bit of a connection but then he continues with a big gesture. And the thing is, I also don't understand this gesture. Like, what is he really feeling? Is he afraid? Is he like, oh, he came through the window? Like, I don't understand from an acting standpoint. I don't quite, I, I don't get this. I don't, does he know this person? Is he afraid of this person? Like, I don't get a clear read on this. And, and it's just like, oh, come on. It, it's kind of generic. I don't, like, maybe there was a big idea behind this, but I I, I don't know. I failed to read it. Um, and then it, it also it's also two contradicting gestures. Like, the first gesture here is like, oh, it doesn't matter. Oh, it's, it's. I don't, I don't even know. I don't even know. Like, it's oh, the window. Oh, this guy again. Like, I don't quite understand this release. It's it's a release of tension. And then it goes right back into you with a lot of tension, uh, which, by the way, is kind of awesome that it even curls his, uh, curls his finger so much. Uh, that's that's really cool. I, I, I like that. Um, Sometimes you need to be a little bit careful with it because it can weaken a pose if you do something like this. You know, the the sometimes the strongest pose is still is still the absolute straight version of it. Um, but I kind of it 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 gives a little cartoony touch here, which I think is really nice. Um, yeah, so that's that's what I don't understand about the background sky performance. Like big rage action, ah, uh, oh, come on, doesn't matter. Big rage action again, um, and and this makes kind of sense that it leads to like ah, oh, I'm calling the police. Like you know, here I get it, but there's this moment in between where you're taking a lot of attention for I feel like very little. Uh, payoff and you take away attention from the really interesting performance going on in the front all right um let's have a look at the next one by andres ramos <laughs> oh my god this is also so nice i don't even know like out of those three i feel like all of them could have won first place i like them all uh for different reasons they have different strengths um wow i <laughs> I really like this one. Uh, so let's see. Let's see what good stuff we can find to steal for our own animations. I love the perfect... Um, they're like three points, if I didn't miscount. 
Yeah. There are three points for the head. And every time the head position is, is changed, it has something to do with the dialogue. There's an accent in the voice. That is really nice. How did you get in there? And uh, there's also not much taking away from the focus on the face. You just have the that leg is doing a small step back. That is all. The rest is just modification of the pose. And it works so well. Like, this is not three poses. This is the same pose modified. But, you know, sometimes that's all what you need. And if you have something with such a big, like, you know, it gets so much taller, um, that that feels like, like two very different poses. Um, Yeah, it's simple, but it works so well. And you have a very regular walk cycle for the other character. Like it's just walk, 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 walk. And most of the performance, you know, there, there is a general stance, like there's a little bit of hunched overness. There is, you know, you can feel like Wild's cat in the whole posture, like it is, uh, a walk cycle with uh, some um, attitude in it, but most of the attitude comes from the facial performance. And of course, this wonderful acting choice. That's so nice. This pause before he does anything with the cup is really nice. So I wonder when the character made the decision to push the muck over. I kind of miss a little bit of a of a contact of the muck. Like th this can happen because um, we as animators we know what is going to happen, right? We have a plan. We think like, oh, he has to throw over the muck. What I do miss is a little glance of the mug to focus on it because right now he's doing like a whole eye roll, like, oh, what are you blabbering? That's really nice, really good performance. But I think logistically, before getting the paw ready, there should have been a little glance down to, you know, really make the plan to push over the mug. Then that would have been the first intention cue. The second intention cue is here. The second intention cue is the the uh, paw going in a in a um, anticipation, ready to to push this over, uh, kind of kind of pose. Um, oh, someone's chat in the chat is asking uh, why eleven seconds. Um, I think there was a 10 second club before the 11 second club that got like uh stopped for some reason. I don't I don't remember. That was a long time ago. Um and I think 11 seconds it's you know it's a little bit arbitrary I think um but they were probably just looking for an amount of animation that would be doable uh in a month because you know it's a monthly thing not everybody has a lot of time and 11 seconds you can kind of uh, you can kind of you can kind of do uh, comfortably as a side project, and it is of course not always a clear eleven seconds. Uh, you know, sometimes it's ten, sometimes it's. I think they sometimes go over. Um, you know, if it if it makes sense for the scene. Um, pose wise, so okay, so we have to talk about the camera because. There's something being done here that I would advise any beginners against because beginners usually completely exaggerate this. We have a slow turn of the camera going around the characters. That's a very tempting thing to do in 3D because it's so easy. It's so easy to do that, to, to just take the camera and have it spin around the 
the uh, the characters. If you do something like that, you should make sure that you start with an interesting silhouette and you stop with an interesting silhouette. And ideally, you also have interesting silhouettes uh, in between while the motion is going on. Um, it's easy to overdo it. It's easy to have too much camera motion. Um, so yeah, you kind of you kind of need to be very careful with that. In this case, I feel like it works really, really well. Um, it, it makes the scene very dynamic and how the character, the black ca uh, cat is popping up from the left and then popping up in front. Um, it just it just works. But yeah, you need to be very uh, careful with a cinematography like this. I'm also not quite sure with um, like, you know, this silhouette is not the best silhouette for this character. Like, this is awesome for the blue cat. This is kind of like, you know, when you lose the back legs, meh, you can't spend too much time in there. And I think this is why the camera even goes a little bit further to that side. So, so you at least see all paws again. Um, I also wonder, like, maybe that would have been too much. But I sometimes I, I often prefer to take the silhouette out of uh, to take the the arms out of the body. Maybe this would have been too much, you know, maybe something like this uh, here. Um, I don't know. This works also okay as a placement because you have a little opening here to, to place the paw. Um, I don't know. It's speculation. It's only speculation that this might look better, but sometimes I, I prefer holding for big anticipation, holding the arms outside of the body. I also love the, the motion itself of the push. It's very like tap, tap, like the secondary tapping. That's really nice. That feels very cat pawy. Hi Dylan, hi newbie videos. Um, newbie videos ask, are you ever going to make tutorials again? Enjoyed a lot the morph animation project. Uh, yeah, I mean, I plan to, I really want to. Uh, having time is always the issue and uh, I tend to be a little bit too ambitious with my tutorials and <laughs> what I can manage to get done. Um, yeah, what can I say except for that I, yeah, I really want to do more tutorials. I really want to find ways to make more. And I don't know, like eventually I want to like invest uh, and and have maybe have someone help me uh, output more tutorials, cut them and stuff like that. Uh, I have like some tutorials already filmed and they just need to be cut. Uh, some in which I even don't have my beard. So... Uh, it was a while ago. Um, I do sometimes do live stream tutorials. There was a live stream. I think the previous live stream that we did was how to do an eye blink. Uh, I want to do more like these uh, as well, where it's just, you know, a live session, which the disadvantage is it's not cut down. It is the full two, three, four hours, however long it took to animate it. Uh, which also is the advantage of it. You can see really every moment and every thing that I was thinking, I was uh, speaking out loud. Um, but yeah, shorter tutorials, more tutorials. Uh, I'm thinking about them a lot. Uh, just need some time to actually do them. Um, so yeah, <laughs> kind of it's kind of not a new situation, but you know, this is how it is. Um, Let's go back to the critiques. Are there any topics that you would really like to see tutorials for next? Because, um, you know, obviously I want to continue the 2D animation class. Uh, that's kind of like stuck in the middle, unfinished for a while now. Uh, but yeah, if you have any other urgent questions uh, on your mind, like any topics or any kind of... Um, 
kind of animation challenge that you want to know about. Oh, yeah. And I think what would also be fun uh, for these live stream animation things, uh, I already did like two um, other uh, 11, um, not 51 animation exercises. And I'll probably do more of that too. So absolutely love how this pushing it takes place. And then the slight, slight little arc of the paw after the, the mug starts falling on its own, really nice. Uh, look at how the black cat stops the fall. Like there's this whoop, bobbing up and then there's a little bit of an extra anticipation and then pushes it back up again. Um, like, see this like multi-step thing. And at the same time, uh, you know, despite this detail being here of like falling down, push, push up, anticipation down, push up. And there's like a little bit of a steadying with that paw. It kind of like immediately whoop melts into this pose. This is also something that I wouldn't uh, recommend beginners to do. If you are a beginner animation, I would probably have the cat steady the mug first. <laughs> You know, it also doesn't make sense if you think about it that the paw is behind the muck, then it's in front of the muck, and then it's coming down. It's a little bit of a cheat, but it works. The animator gets away with it. Um, so if, if for a beginner, I would uh, I would um, advise to like have a push all the way up, have the have the cup go in its safe position, and then go into the next talking position here. Um, but yeah, really interesting how this very cheated pose works. Very nice accent in the mouth shape. Very, you have this very nice big apartment. Okay, uh, my biggest complaint in animation quality here is that last little jump forward. I do, I do feel like this is too diagonal. I think I think the 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 pose kind of gives us an, an arrow shape. So you know we have a very kind of steady like line here and then we have like this typical kitty vase shape and this gives us an arrow and i think this is the line on which the diagonal motion should have taken place uh can i keep this on screen and still no i thought there was a way to keep this visible. Hmm. Because if you look at this, um, this is a lot flatter than the actual position that was animated. Um, so the character is going a lot to the right. And I would probably have put uh, this one over here something like that um to 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 not like this gives a very steep um uh, not so steep angle this one gives a more steep angle i gotta sneeze ah excuse me um and that's like the biggest thing that i don't like i like the bounce I wonder if the bounce could have been even bigger. Like, I think what I don't like is the ears being stuck in that one place. Do you see that? The tip of the ear is kind of stuck in one place. I think I would probably have done like a little bit of a, you know, bigger smear to get there. And then, you know, maybe a little tiny bit more of an overshoot. Uh, but, you know, I know if a cat is, like, alert, then there will be tension on the ears. So maybe that was the idea, and I'm, I'm arguing against the idea that the animator had. 
Uh, but yeah, very solid animation. Really like the playfulness of that character. Oh, by the way, the blink here, that little like, like the character isn't blinking here. There's just like this big, like mm -hmm. this, uh, the pupils getting larger. <laughs> that is so nice. Such a nice detail. Uh, yeah, wonderful animation. Really like it. Uh, newbie videos has 2D animation ba by basically like the Skillshare ones. I think they're amazing. Thank you very much. Um, I it's always great to hear this because you know the Skillshare ones were so much work, <laughs> and you know they still, despite them being so much work, they were still like only half of what I wanted to do in production value. But you know, at some point, I had to say like I need to push this out of the door. Um, um, because, you know, I like to to redo things and refine things far too many times, which, which is the reason why there are not more of them. But yeah, that's good to know. The 2D animation course is definitely uh, very high up on my list. Uh, I also want to make sure that as much as I possibly can is on the uh, on YouTube, YouTube for free, like the part that actually holds like all of the information. I always try to cut that down and have that as the free video. And you know, the the course is then you know, let's do the slower, let's do the step by step. Um, yeah. Ah, <laughs> oh, Shamshum TV has a really good question. Um, first of all, thank you for the kind words. Uh, the general question is, uh, with AI getting so good at image generation, morphing, et cetera, is there space for us? Uh, well, at the moment, I am very sure that the answer is yes. I've been working with AI stuff, uh, not even for animation. Like I, I do a lot of, uh, Market like my day job is not animation anymore. I do a lot of uh, like marketing and some some coding and stuff like that. And uh, I've been using AI text generation a lot. I've been doing some stuff with image generation. And um, AI is weird in that it seems very impressive at first. Um, like it's it's so fascinating. I think this is where the hype is coming from that you can get something decent out of nothing, which feels amazing. Uh, you know, you it's almost like you think about something and then it becomes reality. And like just that step from zero to something is so impressive that we're like, wow, amazing what AI can do. But then if you actually work with AI more and uh, you also try to get good at getting like the exact um, result that you want. Because I feel like AI is very good in like giving you something from nothing. And when you're lucky, this is what you're looking for. When you're not lucky, you're like, oh, I would like to refine this. And this is how animation and filmmaking usually works. Like you write a first draft or a second draft. Uh, you do storyboards and, and stuff like that. And then you refine them until they match your artistic vision. And this is where working with AI becomes almost as laborious and sometimes even more as doing it manually because to get the AI to match your artistic vision 100% is really hard. Um, for the productions where nobody gives anything about the... Uh, the artistic vision being met well, I feel like for those productions, AI will be great. If you just want to, you know, make like a trash, like Funku Panda, I, I don't know, like, you know, the, the, remember those like horrible spoof uh, animation films of DreamWorks and Disney films? Like, I feel like those... We're gonna see a lot more of those because they're gonna be so easy to generate now. Like if you if you're not that, if you don't have artistic integrity, uh, it's it's gonna be a, a paradise for people like that because you can generate like decent garbage very quickly. But if you want to 
meet an artistic vision, have an artistic vision, an artistic voice, an expression, something that feels very human and controlled and consistent, um, then AI, I think, will also be almost as much work as um, as doing it manually. Because, you know, if, you, if you're getting invested in quality, then you need to do a lot of R&D about artificial intelligence and that will also cost a lot of money and a lot of uh, people power and um, so i think for like the highest output for like films that are art films that are really personal really artistic really joyful really good have a personal handwriting i don't think ai is gonna be able to replace that easily um, but I am kind of afraid of like how easy it will be to produce garbage. Um, that's kind of my my biggest concern about um, about AI because that could also be a problem for the good stuff. You know um, that if there's so much garbage, then we're not going to be able to see the good stuff anymore. It, it might completely drown good stuff, and you know we might have to change all the algorithms algorithms and the way how we distribute content to find the good stuff again um yeah i don't know that's my opinion right now um and i also don't think that that um advances in ai will really make a difference here because there's just a you know at some point somebody has to make a decision and stick with that decision and Maybe you can program an AI, AI to do that and, you know, carry that all out for a full feature film. But I, I think, you know, that lack of personal vision might going to be a trouble for a lot of uh, AI carry productions. Um, and uh, I do think it will change a whole lot. And, you know, we have to live with it. It's not going to be going away. So uh, to... Like every artist should ha they have like a basic knowledge on how it works and prompt engineering and, and stuff like that. Because, you know, sooner or later you will, it will be part of your job. And I think it's also a good chance for like concept art or, you know, just brainstorming concepts and stuff like that. I don't know. Like we need to find places where AI works good and we need to find places where uh, we need to keep. AI out of it because this is the meat of quality. Uh, I don't know, but we will see. We'll see what the what the future brings. I feel like I was rambling for a long time now, um, but yeah. What I I I stumbled into the other day was uh, uh, so Sonos Sono dot AI com or dot com or something like this uh, to generate music and it has a little bit of the same problem like it's a little bit his hit and miss it might give you an awesome music track uh and then you can not tweak it that much you kind of have to get lucky uh and you know you have to be lucky for some glitches to not appear but oh boy if no glitches appear and it 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 by coincidence matches your vision from your prompt uh music generation is also going to be a crazy scary thing uh and also like you know imagine spotify spotify already has so much music it, it's so difficult to find smaller artists really unusual cool new things and spotify is going to get flooded by ai generated music uh I don't know, for sure interesting times um, and for sure very interesting to uh, observe and to see where everything, how things will shake out. Personally, by the way, I do not like calling it AI because that's not what it is. It's a statistical uh, image generator. Like, you know, it's a diffusion model. And text generators are a large language model. They're text generators. They're not artificial intelligence. They're not trying to simulate the brain. Uh, uh, ChatGPT, all it does is predicting the next likely word out of training, out of weights. Uh, it's not actually 
thinking. And I think it's very dangerous that we throw this all in the same pot. Uh, large language model is not artificial intelligence. It's a text generator. A uh, diffusion model is not artificial intelligence. It's an image generator generating images from, you know, statistical likelihood and probability and, and stuff like that. Um, yeah, and it's just a tool. It's not intelligent. It's a tool, and we should we should treat it as such. Uh, that's my current thoughts about this. <laughs> not sure if that was helpful or interesting for anyone. Let's continue with the 11 Second Club competition animations. Uh, here we have the fourth place from Thomas Dibbett. Oh, okay, we have some nice cartoony, big, uh, big motions again. <laughs> like something about the I call the police and they're just walking in. I really and some I really love that. Like it really gets me. And the other character just being relaxed on the windowsill. I really like that setup. Um, one thing that I don't like from the acting setup is he's standing in the window, technically. Uh, I don't know. I feel like it makes it a little... Like, it undermines the dialogue because it's not properly uh, mapping the dialogue. He is not in there yet, you know, which... Okay, maybe that's a bit nitpicky of me. And there's just some dissonance here that rubs me the wrong way. Um, it's also, I feel like, you know, obviously it's kind of not filled with... <laughs> it is It is a fun jump, though. I like that. Like, very clean arc, very nice start position. I would probably, yeah. Okay, so there's one big, one big problem I have with that. Like you can kind of see it in the leg done right. Like look at that leg over here. You have this push, that works really nice. I would have loved to see the same push here in the hand. Um, you know, to have him jump up. Uh, where is it? You know, as he's like jumping up, you have that that leg come up, and I kind of look for something similar in the wrist here. So there's an actual reason of like having the hand there, like you know, to really give him like this extra boost, this extra push, and by um, taking a, a hand the arm off the uh windowsill the window frame too early it kind of denies the position of this arm like if he had the arm there to push himself he isn't actually pushing himself um i do like the the it almost has a little bit of like a genie feeling from Aladdin, like pop, I'm here. It's a little bit weird of a whoop and then uh, popping out the other side. Really like that. Look at the timing of the arm, the hand being placed on his elbow. Really love how snappy it is. Really love the smear frame. Ha. Oh, I love me some 3D smear frames. Whoop. <laughs> that is really nice. Love that, you know, with all the cartoony bounciness, there is uh, some clear posing and then, you know, very clear holds, uh, moving holds, but yeah, still some holds. Uh, my cat is meowing. Maybe you can hear that. Um, what are you complaining about, Rainbow? Where are you? 
I, I can't. I can't. Hmm. I don't know what she wants. She has food. I gave her food before live stream. I pet her. I opened the door for her she, so she could go out. Yeah, I don't know what you want. Um, so, probably wants to play. That's the thing in the list that's not uh, that's missing. Uh, love how there's like arcs in the body here. Like you have this like, like especially the belly, you have that that big curve in there, and then you you bend into the next pose into the opposite direction. I also like that, you know, it's not, it's a very, like the curve is not like a full like this, you know, it, it could have been this as well, like that. But I kind of like like that there's like a little dent in the curve, like it's more, uh, it's more like curve and then this is like kind of sticking out and then you have like all these straight lines. Uh, I don't know. Like I, I, I like the rhythm of that. That's it's a nice rhythm in the posing. All right. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Like. Very nice, very nice animation. Let's go to the next one so we, you know, get a couple more interesting ones. I love this one. This, I feel like, is the first one that truly feels like out of a movie. We have a shot reverse shot situation then we have like a little creative thing showing the horse picking something from the fridge you know that that uh that works perfectly to shot inside the fridge with the with the different layers um still holding contact to the other other person i love that you know in the first shot the horse is not in the picture and then it is <laughs> Uh, as it was looking down in the fridge, the butt came up. And then we shoot back to the fridge camera, and then we shoot back to that shot reverse shot camera. Really clean filmmaking, really uh, clear cinematography, putting the attention, the full attention on one character when we need it. Very nicely done. Let's see who, who did this. Um, Simone, really nice. Uh, <clears throat> For my taste, and you know, we might be in an area of taste here, I find the accents kind of tame like the whole like the whole pose from a to b is like how do you get in here is in like over 24 frames over a second we get into this pose which is nice can work i kind of miss a last little bit of an accent on here and I think it's it's only a little bit like, how did you get in here? How did you get in here? How did you get in here? Like, I feel like you can do all of that. And then just I'm missing a little bit of like an extra punch. How did you get in here? Like, like a little bit of a snap on the accent in the dialogue. And I think the, the horse, you know, maybe, maybe this is just my taste. I like cartoony stuff. Maybe I'm trying to uh force this into a style that this person didn't want to do like how do you get in there perfectly okay realistic gesture to do uh later dylan but i feel like i don't know like if you have voice acting that is big like this and hitting 
moments like this one, I kind of miss that. And then again here you have you have window you have the o which is ha uh, which is hit which makes sense it makes sense in the flow it makes sense for the accent uh that the 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 character has like this o uh to that's a very fun moment in the voice recording i do feel like it needs another punch for obviously because you know i feel like the obviously is a very important part of this message because think about it if the dialogue would be how did you get in there the window Th that kind of misses a piece of the message here the the message is like oh you're annoying of course the window like you know that that has like the juice of the acting here that obviously like you know are you are you stupid like obviously the window like that is all expressed in this last little word obviously and it's kind of a little bit weak here. It's kind of a little bit uh, going under in the head turn. I mean, I guess it's kind of slurred in the voice acting too. Like, obviously, do you like it, they immediately speak uh, further? Okay, I can understand why this was animated this way because it kind of, you know, the the voice acting has a little bit of that too. Like, obviously, slurs immediately into the next sentence. But I don't know. The window, obviously, do we attack anyone? Like, I would rather hit the obviously very sharply and then do you attack anyone like and the during the do you attack i feel like you're free to move the head however and you can like you know do that little turn towards the fridge but i i i, I don't know I, somehow i'm bothered by it that it already uh starts during the uh word that i think should have our full attention you know the window obviously do you attack anyone that sh the window obviously do you attack any like i don't know like i feel it 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 blurs it a little too much i do like it for live and let live to like just have it like live and let live uh, be so hidden in what he's doing the selection process of looking into the fridge like here i feel like i really like it And this, like, kind of like, what am I even going to do against the horse? Like, you could just, <laughs> like, that kind of weak, like, lifting his hand. Works. Works very well. Yeah. Very solid animation. And from a cinematography standpoint, I think this one is the strongest one. Uh, really great work by Simone. <laughs> okay. This, I like this, obviously. There's, like, so much sass in it. <laughs> okay, so, um, again, cinematography, mm. It's a little like, you know, it's a nice rendering, but in a like film, I don't know, like in a film, I would probably, I don't know, like 
I feel like in a film, you can start with the character, with focus on the character, or, you know, focus on the apartment. Maybe you have, like, a nice little, like, top-down shot. Uh, you have him, like, in front of the in front of the gaming console or something. And then maybe something where you can see like, you know, almost like a little bit fish eye, like introduce the room first, then introduce him having fun with the game. And uh, I don't know, I like, I would have in a cinematography, I would have put that, I, I would have maybe like made two accents out of this, like introducing the room, with you know which happens to have him in there and then introducing what he's doing as an extra step closer um i also think he's a bit too quick to the draw here this is like a very typical problem of like we already uh know what the character is supposed to do like um that is like grabbing the pistol back behind him like body mechanically i this is actually fine, you know, this is a, like a fine jump, like fine cartoony action. Like that's not the problem that I have with that. This is very well animated. Uh, I have more of a problem from an acting standpoint that I feel like a character wouldn't be, unless, you know, a trained soldier or stuff like that. But I feel like generally people are not that ready to attack if there's like a strange thing appearing at the window like a gnome pushing up a window i'd be like like i would need a whole lot more time to like realize what's going on I, it would be more like what was that what is oh what what a little look where's my where's my gun like and and then the where's my gun process alone would be like it was here somewhere ah here it is uh and then you know there's so many more steps involved uh especially like in a panic and uh he's like despite being in a panic he's like perfect to the draw perfectly grabbing the gun and shooting it like just from like an acting standpoint it would have and it doesn't have to be much longer like you know maybe 12 seconds 12 seconds 12 frames you can have a lot happen in 12 to 24 frames one second more uh but it is a complicated shot. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, even says, I should be watching during my six hour passing period, but I want to nap for waking up early. Yeah, go to bed. <laughs> if you need a nap, you should get it. This It's recorded. You can watch it later. Um, <laughs> I don't want to keep anyone up. If you need your sleep, you need your sleep. Um, I love that, like, he's the first person to, like, in general, I love the reaction. I love him wanting to defend himself in his way. Like, for this character, it makes sense that he just has, a, like, a Nerf gun laying around. Uh, like, I like that realism in that, you know, that would be what a character realistically would do. They would try to maybe defend himself, maybe leading up to that with a little more thinking a little bit more of like an arrow margin when grabbing the toy gun um but uh yeah and and then you know the other gesture of getting the phone out that makes so much sense of course yeah that's what we would be doing if we want to uh if we want to call someone to help And, you know, it's so much before he said this, he's going to call someone. That's kind of like a mistake that happens a lot in animation that um, we mime the dialogue. So the moment uh, he would say, like, I call the police would be the moment where he he takes out the phone. That is like direct Mickey Mousing of like, you know, I'm announcing what I'm doing, but you don't have to do this. You can do it a lot earlier. Uh, you can do things that you're not announcing in, in your voice. Um, so I don't know. Like, that's a really good choice here. And then that's kind of crazy of how all these characters come in. <laughs> uh, 
That's kind of cool. I wonder if the snap, like I'm kind of missing the snap, how he calls the the others. I wonder if um, like the other problem I feel like is that this pose is kind of weak. Like you go from some very strong poses to a kind of generic, I don't know, like, come on, that that's not very, um, very original. I feel like there could have been uh, something, something more interesting that also reads like, hmm, like maybe there could have been like a whistling pose. of like the fingers in the I don't know like something like this might have been fun or if you want to if you want to keep at the uh, the whistling um maybe something like uh to really make room for the snap and you know have this really clear in the silhouette and maybe have something that shows like a little more control um i i don't know of course, this is just a first idea. Also, love me some straight against curve. You know, have a straight line here, have a bend or a curve on the other side. But like basically giving this snap the spotlight and then after you snap, like maybe just have it settle just a tiny bit uh, so it's not distracting from what is happening in the back. Um, Yeah, I wouldn't dissolve it through like, like he's kind of pointing at it. I don't think you need that. I think you can just, you know, he has full control of the situation. You could just be like, and then you have like chaos breaking through the, the window. Um, if you want to have something like this, I think you even, you need that, pos that position up here even more. You can do the snap and then like just a hand gesture. I wouldn't dissolve the pose anymore or have like a whole big thing that could distract i would just go like snap and then you know all the stuff is happening in the background anyway so uh yeah but you know nice story nice situation really like this one by luis antonio meco very cool Next one is from Luke Loganess. <laughs> I like how this is like a very um, classic way to act out the scene. You know, it's a very literal way. I like how he's kind of stopping, like he's kind of like, oop, there's somebody there. Like he, he was already getting slower. Uh, love the defensive position. That works really well. Look at that nice little two-step turn. Like he was kind of relaxed, just looking at something. And and there, there are multiple, like it's not even left foot, right foot. It's also like he's just... They're reading on the counter. There's like, huh, there was a noise? What? And then he's doing that big reaction. That's like the minimum amount of, of steps that you should have for a character realizing something. That's very nice. Like the, see the bounce in the, in the shoulders? That's very nice. And you have like a little bit of like a, like almost like breathing, wobble, like really, really cool. And you have like tuck tuck turn. 
And this is kind of what I was always picturing of a character like you oh, you caught me breaking in the window obviously like this gives us this this is like what i was kind of missing in some of the others this big like no, obviously <laughs> like also like the accent with the closed eyes closed eyes are very interesting if you close eyes for a long time it's because your character is very sure it it is like a, a slow blink communication is like uh, it can mean like I understand you I've understood uh, but it can also mean like you know I'm very sure of what I'm doing uh, love the use of a of a slow blink here and then it ends in this Lee in this confrontational one that has like during the Lee, you have the mouth shape widening and you have the eyebrows going up. That's really nice. And I love the live and let live finger wobble. And the butt has a very nice little uh, mouth shape with the uh, puffy cheeks. the smile like this is like confrontational not smiling the whole time and then when he's like packing a family photo he's like mm -hmm, <laughs> smiling the whole time Body mechanics are very solid in this one like you have a nice little like this is not a walk cycle you have like a step step adjusting one more step for balance and then adjusting one step back to have a wider stance body mechanic is really sound here really nice and the end of all of the like mm, uh, mm, the other character going like ah, i don't know what to do I, huh? and then it just ends in this very clear very nice silhouette <laughs> really really good animation uh five plus years uh experience not in the industry it's very very solid very well done I just did gesturing with the with the with the frame. Like I feel like the the person's animation style and ideas correlates a lot with how if I was an animation supervisor, uh, those are so many qualities that I want to see uh, in this shot, and and they're in there, and. Yeah, I really, really like this one. It's a very, like, it's not as flashy as the others, maybe, but it's just so solid. Uh, just very solidly done. Cinematography, like, this is an interesting choice. This is kind of a little bit of a weak choice. Um, I would probably, I don't know, like, anything that looks like a stage. Uh, this, this is a bit flat, uh, maybe, but... I don't know, like really solid animation. Um, probably, maybe like one post suggestion that I would have is to clean up a little bit of the, uh, like that hand shape introduces so much detail and has like a tentacly octopusy thing going on there i will probably try to simplify it uh to just have something that is very clearly readable you know maybe maybe just a little bit of points of interest going on but, you know, maybe not go into every single finger here. 
just group them a little bit more, especially because, you know, you have all of the fingers here, all of the same fingers there. Uh, so to have some simplification there might have been a nice touch. Okay, uh, I want to skip some and look a little bit um, more down for things that we could give advice to. Uh, oh, I do have to watch this. Um, oh, wait, we're not in the right competition. Uh, where is it? There, March. And then let's just go down a couple. Why not? Let's have a look at a 2D animation one. <laughs> mm. That's a very solid one too. Lots of fun. Okay. Uh, animation by J. Kubiet. Kubiak? Kubiech? Um, I love the get in here. Like having uh, the two words mapped to an overshoot, that's really nice. How did you get in here? That works. And that little push forward here for the word here, very nice, very confrontational. Uh, kind of cartoony. But I, I like it. Like, I like stressing words clearly like that. Love the 3D-ishness. Like, just look at the, the head shape and the middle line. I like that it, you know, it goes to, like, a, the, the head goes from three-quarter to the right to a side view to the left. I feel like the... Um, there's a little bit of an inconsistency of how far away the um, the eye is from the border here, because I feel like it's extremely close here. Uh, I'm not that sure. Like in general, this is quite doing doing quite a good job on staying on model, uh, but I wonder if it would be better for the model if the side view was a little bit more over here so you have some distance here uh, i think that might make it feel even more solid when this character is turning but i love the 3d ishness in there i love the um like animating with that many arms <laughs> like that is a challenge like you should not animate with extra arms because you know it's so much extra work but it, it's used so well for a lot of uh, things and like first you have like them being completely synchronized doing the same motion that is very cool and then you have two of them doing something different namely wipe wiping the hands on the uh on the shirt like that's very nice and using the other set of arms for like a big like talking gesture that's very charming that's very cool um hey scott Nice to read from you. Yeah, I'm doing quite well. How are you doing? Nice to hear from you. Um, Scott, do you have a, a streaming project, YouTube channel thing running now on your own? Um, <laughs> I love that it, like, you know, there's like this, I'm talking about the window, blah, 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 and uh, cleaning the hands at the same time. And then going into like, you know, interrupting this like big like demonstration thing to I'm going back to accusing you. And I love how it mixes the like, he's the one in the, in the, in a pickle. He's the one who obviously messed up, is breaking in a place, is stuck in a window. And he tries to get like the high status by like, being like, you and i love that i love that uh you know you have a very uh confident upper body and the other half of the body stuck in a window i really like that um 
of it. It's kind of like a character demanding high status, which cannot demand high status. I find this like status negotiation so interesting in acting, like, you know, that there are always characters uh, trying to establish their higher status or trying to push uh, other people into lower status. Uh, there are people not even trying to have a higher status. They just have a higher status. And, you know, the other character doesn't really have a low status. Like, he looks very sturdy and uh, and sure as well. Like, he would have no problem pushing the other character out of the window. So that's that's really cool. I love the double, um, like, first of all, very cool creative choice doing the upside down. I think that really uh, characterizes him as like, you know, oh, I'm a silly trickster uh, kind of thing. And it also leads into him pushing himself up. That's kind of cool. Like it's already an intention cue for, okay, I'm trying to go up here again, like that leg that one down here is going there in preparation for the push up. Um, and then that push up has like a, a little like tap on the window, like trying to find a steadier position. That's a really nice detail. Really loving that. I like the cutting back. Like it's a very short shot here. The... I like that it basically cut back for the like eye roll for a clearly I can. <laughs> like that's that's really nice. Um and then I call the police. Like just a nice little overshoot bump. Solid. Really good solid work. Really like this one. Okay. Let's go back to the selection and skip over a couple. Let's oh and there's a nice looking 2D one. Let's have a look at that one by Arda Sahimbas. <laughs> I love the cat or raccoon or whatever it is getting more comfortable. Like, that's really nice. Just cutting to the character already being more comfortable, not even showing going into position is a power move. Like it, it both, it saves you animation work. Like, you know, the character could have laid down here, you know, with that last little accent, but to just cut into the character already being comfortable is genius. It saves animation work and it's funny. It's like pushing, like it's, it's, going all of a sudden from you know i'm making myself feel a little at home here to i make myself a lot at home here in the matter of cut that's a really cool choice so i would probably i feel like this gesture of the boy trying to uh to protect himself is a little bit undermined um I feel like it is a little bit too soft um, because, you know, look at that east. Like, there are a lot of animation uh, uh, lines that are really close to each other. Like, there's a huge ease here. I think I would probably uh, have done an, just a very classic overshoot. Like, that might not be very imaginative, I know, but I think I would have, like, um, have him, like, almost asleep or whatever just um just looking up a little bit and then you know have a really classic like oh, can't hear the audio oh that is um that is unfortunate you should be able to hear the audio Hmm. Let's see. Uh, 
Oh no, you couldn't hear the audio for the entire stream. That's a shame. Uh, thank you, Retrosaurus Rex, for uh, pointing that out. Of course, uh, for the 11 second club, there's a lot better to hear the audio. Um, so I think there should have been like a very classic, like, uh, you know, spacing pattern, like, uh, maybe have like a little bit of a favoring, then go with a small ease into an overshoot and then come down out of this again with, uh, also a little bit of like an ease, something like that. Uh, so you have popping him out, you know, with hair and everything pointing down, um, and then just settling, settling in a more, you know, settling here and not having such a long, like ease into the up, up position. Like right now it's more like this. And then it has a bunch of ease frames. Um, so yeah. Um, yeah, just a very, uh, classic overshoot settling back. And then I think the other thing that undermines this a little bit is the blanket. Um, how, how did you get in here? The window. How, how did you get in here? I think what the character is trying to do is to shield himself. And I can understand why the, um, why the, uh, why the blanket isn't going up because it would cover his face. But I, I don't know. Like, I feel like because the character has the intention to shield himself, I would kind of like give that to him, you know? And then maybe, uh, Maybe have it lower just a little bit when he's like a raccoon, just a raccoon. But you know, I I would make this gesture fully effective as like a little shield. Uh, I feel like that would have been nice. Uh, Az Azura says this is my first time watching one of these, so yeah, welcome. Uh, get comfy in our little critiquing live stream. I just assumed the audio wasn't playing on purpose. Yeah, I mean, sometimes I do analyze animation without playing the audio for copyright reasons, but, you know, for 11 Second Club, and usually uh, nobody complains and we don't get any beef from YouTube because, you know, it's clearly educational. It's clearly... Uh, so, you know, for, for, for the 11 Second Club, I usually show it uh, uh, or have, have the audio on. Um, all righty. Uh, okay, so that would have been... How, how did you get in here? The window, obviously. So, for obviously, we talked about that earlier. I would like the pose to be fully committed to obviously, and after obviously is finished, then and only when it's finished, I would start the new motion. Obviously. Do you yeah, doing the Lee... Uh, to to soften the pose during the Lee, I think is hurting it. It it's taking back of the, uh, you know the the big message that it has through the window, obviously, obviously, and then you can go over to the next thing. Uh, I th I feel like it really needs its moment. Obviously, do you attack everyone who comes in here? Seems like a weird thing to do, but live and let live. You can I think what this person might like, I love that there is some perspective in there. I feel like do you, hmm. So first of all, the volume of the head, I feel like is not consistent, especially if you think about like the space of the forehead, there are some moments where the forehead clearly grows. Uh, and if you want to do very subtle 3D, I would always, I would always do, um, I would always do the uh, grid lines on it. Like I would always have a little bit of this 
upper, you know, if it's fully frontal, it would be like this. It would maybe sometimes go a little bit in the other direction to really have that line so you know how to align the eyes, you know, um, and, you know, to have just that little bit of a slanted bend orientation uh, a little bit more clearly and more subtle uh, by adjusting everything or orienting everything on such a line could be highly beneficial. Uh, putting a model sheet in between can help to, uh, behind it and a layer behind it can help to keep the, the volume constant. You know, like if you would have like a model sheet that kind of like has this shape and then you can always put it behind it and you can use that to measure like the forehead to measure how big the sides are and stuff like this from the eyes. So it's good to have a layer like that in the background um, for a little bit more of an orientation. Well, clearly I can, I mean, I just I'll did. call the police. I also love the, the like, he has the phone in there. Like this uses the cuts very effectively. Um, it's all a kind of bit muddied in front of his uh, in front of his body. I wonder if there could have been a more clear, like, you know, uh, like maybe there's a call button here, and then he he goes in that negative space to to dial it. Uh, to to have like you know a little demonstrative space similar to the snap that we were talking about earlier all righty a very very good uh animation by arda okay let's do another one let's maybe uh check out another 3d one this is by chris How did you get in here? The window, obviously. Do you attack everyone who comes in here? Seems like a weird thing to do, but live and let live. You can't just break into my apartment. Well, clearly I can. I mean, I just I'll did. call the police. <laughs> Got phone wire? What? I like how, like, wild and crazy this one is. And it's a really good blocking. Like, this is obviously not a fluent animation, but I don't hate that. Like, I, I like how out of the frames that were said it it gets a lot uh, animation by chris how, how did you get in here what <laughs> i don't i'm not sure i understand this pose but I, it's kind of kind of cool So I, I don't I don't know. Like part of me already loves this how it is. <laughs> Just want to exper uh, experiment a little bit with it because uh, I, I don't know. Like I feel like it's kind of like I love this big belly curve here and this arm is kind of destroying it. I wonder it, even if it would have been better to like just have the arm poke out like that you know like to don't even have to try to melt it with the uh with the uh belly shape just just keep it as something strange coming out of the the belly um hmm i don't quite understand like from an acting perspective I so what most people would do is they would try to protect themselves or to, to get away from the spider, right? So I I, I don't know. I, I wonder if we can could fill a similarly energetic pose with a little bit more of like an acting moment, a little bit more of a of a message uh towards like you a spider. Um so Maybe it could have been like, you know, pushing the spider away. Something like that. Like, I don't know, to 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 really have a like. 
And I kind of feel like I want to separate the feet more to have them shine more on their own, the different angles. Because I do like, if you look at it, that one foot is in a side view and that other foot is more in like a front view. I love that. I love that you have like there's two different perspectives in the feet. Uh, I wonder if the model could have been broken to a point where you could look into the open mouth like that. I think that might have been interesting to have like, you know, a negative shape going, cutting into the silhouette. Uh, I don't know. Like, I love the playfulness. I wonder if the playfulness could be combined a little bit more with like a realistic acting beat. This is, you know, uh, personality wise this is really fun this pushes this character to having a certain kind of personality uh but acting wise it gets a little bit muddy uh, i don't quite understand that i do like the little delay and the little like oh, rah! <laughs> and that you know anticipation that's very nice how, how did you get in this is a really decent pose Really like here, the window, obviously. Do you attack everyone who comes in here? Seems like a weird thing to do, but live and let live. You can't just break into my apartment. Well, clearly I can. I mean, I just I'll did. call the police. <laughs> Get in here. The window, obviously. I wonder if that that camera motion is obvious is 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 necessary. I kind of like that, you know. It almost feels like, I mean, uh, we kind of already know from following the other 11 Second Club entries what the dialogue is. Um, but uh, like that he all of a sudden gets on to two legs and gest makes gestures like a human. I feel like that is surprising enough. And it gets kind of watered down by the pen to the window because it, it is like, mm, you know, we, the character being like, hey, look, the window is something different than the camera being like, hey, look, the window. The camera going, hey, look at the window is kind of directing us to the window as if, if something's happening there. And I think it kind of distracts from like, you know, we have a spider here that was uh, like a spider on all legs and all of a sudden behaves like a human. And I feel like we can't really process the funniness of this of this contrast of like, oh, I'm just a spider, Roop, I'm a little guy. Um, because, you know, it gets immediately dissolved by the pen over. Do you get in here? The window, obviously. Do you attack everyone who comes in here? Seems like a weird thing to do, but live and let live. You can't just break into my apartment. Well, clearly I can't, I mean, I just. Very clean, like, pre-gesture and then the main gesture, really nice. You just break into my apartment. Well, clearly I can't, I mean, I just. I'll did. call the police. Really cool. Not sure about the grouping of the fingers uh, on the on the handle. Um, it calls a lot of attention to the finger group. I would probably just keep them all together, uh, or have like one one finger break off, and the rest kind of like just together. Um, to have you know not too much detail there because we still want to look at his face um yeah so if you like the way how i talk about animations how i give feedback and critiques you might want to check out our patreon on patreon.com slash animator island you cannot only support us uh, your support helps me to make more videos more tutorials more live streams but there's also the group mentoring tier if you join our patreon on in the group mentoring tier um you can participate in a group mentoring session every single month to which you can bring your animation your story idea your character design whatever your currently working on in the world of animation and i can give you feedback and uh, tell you tips and tricks on how to make it better and how to build your skills in general if you want to know more about the group mentoring there's a little bit more information on animatorislandcom slash group mentoring um yeah and i would be very happy to help you to take your animation your art to the next level so if you like the way how i give input in 
these uh, sessions, you will probably highly benefit from getting feedback and input uh, every single month. And it helps you to have a deadline to you know get something ready to show consistently. You can also, of course, only just join for one month if you just need feedback on one specific thing. Or you can say, like, it's time. I want to do this project. I want to work on it continuously. I want to have in and I want to have input every single month. Then the group mentoring might be right for you. Please check it out on animatorisland.com slash group mentoring. And you can join on patreon.com slash animator island where you can also just give a few bucks if you like what i'm doing here and you want me to do it more often uh that's a great way to support me um yeah and with that i'm kind of already approaching the end here uh if there are any questions that you have um that you would want me to answer any more topics that you want me to talk about please write them in the chat now uh and also, if you have ever joined the 11 Second Club and I've never critiqued your animation, you can also uh, send me the month and the place that you made, and I will check it out uh, live on stream here and give you feedback right now. Um, so yeah, it doesn't matter if it was from this month or any previous month. I would love to give you feedback uh, on all my 11 second club streams doesn't matter if it's this month or you know i i try to do these monthly um but uh yeah so let's have a look at one more let's go back scroll a little bit further down and just click on one here Gurleen Singh animated this one. How, how did you get in here? The window, obviously. Do you attack everyone who comes in here? Seems like a weird thing to do, but live and let live. You can't just break into my apartment. Well, clearly I can. I mean, I just I'll did. call the police. OK. I feel like there's a weird size different about, uh, difference about the two rigs. And I'm not sure if it's intentional. It could be intentional. It could be kind of interesting. But you know, look at that hand uh, here and that hand here like this clearly clearly a huge size difference uh i don't know it could be an uh, uh conscious choice um but yeah that's that's kind of uh kind of interesting okay so how did you so there are two little beats here this character was uh, sleeping, and I'm not sure, like, why was he waking up? Like, this feels a bit unmotivated. Like, as far as the sleeping pose goes, this is okay. Um, but, like, why is he waking up? I feel like we would we would react. Mm, I don't know. Like, if you, if you really get into, like, okay, I'm sleeping, and I hear something... I don't, I wouldn't immediately, I don't know, I guess if I live alone, I would assume like, oh, this could be an intruder, but it's like immediately like, oh, I want to look over there. And by pure coincidence, he's already looking in the right direction. I feel like a more realistic way to play this is, is would be like, okay, I'm sleeping. I'm like, what was that? And you know, you would have like a little bit of like blinking, blinking. What is going, what? There's someone there? Like, there would be a lot more like, mm, I'm just tired, tired. What? What? Like, I feel like even that would be a double take. Like, you would have, as an acting moment, you would have, like, waking up, blink, 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 kind of focusing on something, kind of seeing it, and then reacting to it. I feel like that is the minimum amount of beats that you might want to have here. Uh, so... How did you get in here? And then, you know, of course, it's going immediately to full energy. I feel like we would have, like, to if you're coming from sleeping, you would probably need a lot more time to build up that energy. You know, you would probably be, like, sleeping, noticing it. How did you come in here? Like, you know, there would be a little bit of a, of a like, transition before you can, like, 
yelled at that strongly. Sorry, Rainbow, I scared our cat. <laughs> um, Here, the window, obviously. Love the shoulder shrug for obviously. Like, there's no gesturing towards the window. I think this is one of the first one that does it. No, it I think we had some before that didn't gesture to any kind of window. Uh, but I, I like that. That, like, really, like, yeah, of course, obviously. Oh, obviously. That really catches that lightness, uh, I feel like, pretty well. Window, obviously. Do you attack everyone who comes in here? Seems like a weird... Okay. All in all, this is, is kind of stiff. Um, like, there are no... Like, I, I don't even mean, like, moving halts or something like this. But the cool thing about 3D is you, what you can get for free is, you know, you can you can affix your pose with the elbow on the chair, you know, and then you can do a 3D rotation for that front body. And this is kind of difficult to draw in 2D. Um, but in 3D, you can get something like this like maybe how i'm i'm how i'm drawing it here is already too much um but like you know just by turning the upper body you would get a lot of life in like the whole upper body area and you could still be kind of subtle about it and I, i'm kind of missing that here uh, that you know there's a little bit of life in the upper body and the shoulder the shoulder region um i think that would be very good for this one not too in the much. window obviously do you attack everyone who comes in here seems like a weird thing to do but live and let live <laughs> oh obviously do you attack everyone who comes in here seems like a weird thing to do but live and i kind of miss something stronger for it's kind of a weird thing to do because you know this is kind of generic uh, there are always a few poses that you know sometimes like poses that we very easy easily slide into is like the point in the air the point at a character and the open face uh symmetric pose those are very cliche poses sometimes you need them sometimes you cannot avoid them but uh i feel like you know you have a guy who broke in with a gun like you can you can have some fun here uh, and you don't need to have like a, a who comes in here. Seems like a weird thing to do, but seems like a weird thing to do. That just think about how weird that would be if he would like scratch himself with the gun, being like, you know, how what a weird thing to do. Like, you know, to like have like a playful but dangerous vibe. Um, or like, you know, use the gun to like point at the chin. Um or uh Hmm. Like those are just some from the top of my head, but you know the 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 chance that you have with the gun to you know kind of tell a silly contrast, um, like of like innocent and dangerous. Uh, I, I feel like you have a perfect prop to play with that. If you don't want to do that, I I would at least think about you know like what could be a, a more like. Um, I don't know, like something about the personality of the burglar. Like, what kind of person is he? Like, is he like crazy? Is it like, you know, what a weird thing to do? Or like, you know, we'll overplay this a little bit. Or like, uh, you know, maybe like super calm and like, oh, what a weird thing to do. Like, just, hmm, just looking around, uh, even not giving him full attention uh, because he feels so sure. Like, you know what I mean? Like, bring a new dimension in it that is more than just, uh, just like. But yeah, um, body mechanics, I think, is pretty solid. You have the, the one foot, second foot push. I do miss a little bit more of a clear splining, I feel like. I feel like. This gets a little bit too soft. I think I would just plop his, his, yeah. I would just plop his his uh, legs to the ground. Um, so you would probably have like tuck one more and then have it on the ground. 
I wouldn't have, I'm, I'm not sure about the ease. Maybe for the first one, because you know, you kinda, you have that control. Um, but if you really like, I don't know. I, I, I think it could be good for the rhythm of the whole thing to have like, you know, ease, plop, set that foot on the ground. Um, and then similarly for him getting up, I think I would start with an ease and then have a big spacing and then maybe a short little ease for when he reaches that position. Um. So obviously, do you attack everyone who comes in here? Seems like a weird thing to do, but live and let live. You can't just break into my apartment. Well, clearly I can't. I mean, I just I'll call the police. I love that invading the personal bubble. Like, that's kind of nice. I would have the other character react to it a little bit with a, a slight delay. Oh, clearly, I can't. It's a weird thing to do, but live and let live. You can't just break into my apartment. Well, clearly, I can't. I mean, I just. I'll call the police. I like that little look around. Like that is one of those realistic gestures that I mean uh, when I say, like, you know, actors give it for you for free, but uh, for animation, you kind of need to think about it. Like that little looking. Oh, clearly, I can't. I mean, I just. I'll call the police. That's very solid. Um, all right, so I don't see any questions in the chat. If you do have any last questions, please let me know and I try to answer. I got joined here by my cat who is telling me that it is time to feed her. Um, yeah. Do you want to say hello to the people? Look over here, Rainbow. Yeah. Let's give you a snack downstairs, huh? Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed this uh, deep dive into the 11 Second Club competition entries. I try to do this more regularly because uh, I think we can always learn a lot, get, get inspired a lot. There are always things that I kind of have forgotten as a possibility. I hope you discovered with me uh, a couple of things along the way as, uh, as well. And uh, yeah, um, all in all, I hope uh, you're having a great day uh have a lot of fun and doing your own animation doing your own art and i'll be very happy to see you in another live stream um yeah hope to see you again soon goodbye